I think it's really an interesting question because we have to, the question one is, what's all this about? What are we trying to do that? Now, goat is goat of inanimate objects of convenience, uh, commodities. And uh, there are excellent reasons for valuing them. But um, uh, the, we value them not for themselves, but what it does to human life. So the central concern is with the lives of humanity, human beings, our well-being, our freedom, uh, our, um, uh, our freedom to do those things which we value and which we have reason to value. Now, so growth in itself of GDP could not be that central figure, so in some ways it has to be an instrument, there's no question. But the second thing to recognize that as an instrument, growth is dependent on uh, many features which are closely related to social welfare. I mean, to give an example, uh, having better health care, not being bothered by constantly by illnesses, is obviously extremely important for leading a good human life, for our well-being and for our freedom. But it's also extremely important for producing, uh, to having a productive labor force, which uh, have uh, can uh, uh, put their best into their work. Same is true of education. Education broadens the mind, uh, open, unlocks the key to the world, makes it possible to communicate, very important for human life, human well-being, human freedom. And yet also education is very central for economic uh, uh, engagement, uh, to be able to produce according to instruction, read this, do that, quality control, and so on, which in a globalized world today is even more important than it used to be earlier. So I think the, the second role, that is uh, the quality of human life being closely related to the capability of human beings not only to serve the uh, individual well-being uh, better and more fully, but also to serve the demands of the economy, demands of the society, the demands of um, the political processes. That, that has to be distinguished uh, with the ultimately the fact that it is the quality of human life for which all this is being pursued. So the social welfare issue, and the term social welfare has got so many connotations that it's sometimes best not to use it, uh, because it, it already immediately comes in as people standing in dole queues and, and going away and not doing any work. They're living on welfare, as it were. And I think that uh, the, the rhetoric is, is really quite important uh, in, in, in this, because bad rhetoric makes us look in a different direction, which to a great extent has happened in this context. It looks as if, as if the social welfare people is, is trying to go away from growth, rather than saying, which actually is very important to say, that uh, if education and health care uh, immunization is good for social welfare, it's the same things are centrally good for economic progress and economic growth. But then there's also the further point that ultimately economic growth itself is for a purpose. The purpose is to improve the quality of human life. You know, I think it's interesting how much confusion is generated on the subject, given the fact that the subject of modern economics began with crystal clarity on these distin distinctions, particularly in the writings of Adam Smith. Uh, both in The Wealth of Nations, which is the more widely read book on economics, but also in the, his first book, Theory of Moral Sentiment, where he discusses how human life relates to each other, how we benefit from talking with each other, how we do the exercise, what he called the impartial spectator, how, how it makes sense for us to place ourselves in the position of another and ask the question, what would it look to an impartial spectator from outside? what we are doing today. So I think that that's the kind of preparation that led, that, that was 1759, 
it led uh, Smith in 1776 to publish the, to do the uh, theory, uh, do the wealth of nation. But that was very much in it: skill formation, the quality of human labor, became a big important factor. Smith's discussion about trade was about how productivity increases by by pursuit, by specialization, by skill formation, all the time helped by education. His concern about lack of equity in, in educational distribution, his deep sympathy with people who are treated as beasts of burden, who don't get an opportunity to improve their mind, to acquire their education. So I think it's very important to get an economic view sufficiently broad, sufficiently wide, uh, to cover all these features, and not to deny that that's what economics is about. Thank you.